Hello, this is Anna Pacheco, SantaFe101.com. My guest today is Rod Gestin, and he is with Mud Grub Hut Greenhouses. And uh, uh, just a full disclosure, uh, Rod and Randy, his wife Randy, and my family, we have been friends for 23 years. Our sons met in daycare 23 years ago, and we've been friends ever since. And uh, also, uh, Rod is an incredible architect. I've been in two of his beautiful houses. So very accomplished man. And um, I want to learn all about this project that he is doing uh, throughout northern New Mexico and in Bernalillo and Sandoval County. Rod, is it OK that I'm recording this interview? Yes. Well, good. Yes, well, perfect. Please. Well, so before we even get started on the greenhouse project, tell us, tell, tell me a little bit more. I know, I, like I said, I've been in two of the beautiful houses that you have designed and have lived in. A, a little bit on your background and then what led you to creating these greenhouses all over northern New Mexico? Sure. Um, well, it's Mud Hub Greenhouses and um, my background's in architecture. I uh, went to school at North Carolina State University in Raleigh, and uh, that's back in the 70s. And um, it's been a long, it was a long learning process as it is in architecture to uh, become uh, really proficient and know what you're doing. But uh, after a few years, um, you start attaining knowledge and confidence and you, uh, and you start taking uh, bigger risks as a result. So um, moving out to Santa Fe was a, uh, was a first time experience out West and, um, and it presented some unique challenges and particularly in design because of the terrain, the topography, the grade, the, uh, uh, the different styles that uh, I was not used to seeing. So uh, it was an adaptation, but I think that um, looking back, it, it made me, um, the challenges did make me better and um, was able to site buildings and able to uh, uh, see works of other people that I would not have had the opportunity to see otherwise. So um, that's what led uh, to architecture. I loved it and um, it was a great puzzle. and. Um, since then, I've moved on to uh, this greenhouse project, which really started as an experiment. Um, I, I only wanted to, um, I really only wanted to uh, do greenhouse, a greenhouse for myself and to be able to grow vegetables. And um, I found it particularly hard because of the challenges that are, uh, uh, that are related to this area. And you have intense sunlight, you have strong winds, you have critters that are voracious. Um, you have all sorts of things that, that keep you from really growing outside, especially in ground. So I wanted to create something uh, for myself with raised beds that would control a lot of the environmental factors. So um, we had it built um, and at, again, at the time, I had no intention of making this a business. Um, I really wanted to grow vegetables. And once the structure was up, uh, we were able to uh, for a few seasons. Uh, um, one time, I, uh, I grew corn in the uh, raised beds. And, uh, um, and that was uh, interesting. It was you know, kind of a mistake. You don't grow corn in raised beds that are covered. Um, but, Did it grow uh, too tall? Did it like, was it too it, tall? It was bending at the top. <laughs> <laughs> that was at, it was at a 90 degree angle at the top. And um, the, um, the ears produced about, uh, I don't know, three or four years. And, um, and when you go to harvest the corn, it takes out about half the soil in the bed. So um, that's, uh, that's something I never tried again, but I've experimented. I went on to uh, get certified as a master gardener in Sandoval County. And uh, so I do a lot of volunteer work there. So about five years ago, I, um, I wanted to do this experiment and see if this would be a viable business because my thinking was, um, you know, if I'm having trouble doing this, there must be others that want to garden, that want to grow. Uh, fresh organic food for themselves. 
And so I, uh, I sat at the Los Ranchos uh, um, uh, market as a vendor and um, had built a model. Uh, it was a, a model of our uh, 12 by 20 uh, unit and it was a 15% scale model. And so- What does that mean, 15, 15% scale model? What does that mean? That means a 15% of actual size. Okay. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's about three feet by a little over a foot wide. Uh, that's what it amounts to. So um, I had it out there and I um, hadn't built a model since architecture school. So um, it was interesting finding materials that would depict the actual materials that, that were used to build this prototype. So I have it out there on the table and people were coming by asking, um, asking how much those uh, herb, little herb gardens cost. And uh, so, you know, I had to explain, well, these aren't herb gardens, these are actual greenhouses that you can buy. So uh, anyway, um, I made my first sale that day and it was uh, with an oncologist from uh, Albuquerque. And um, she asked if I couldn't uh, visit the yard right after the, uh, Right after the market closed, I did, and I made my first sale and um, pushed onward. So last year we sold uh, 15 of these. So far this year, we've sold four. So um, the it, uh, business is increasing quite a bit. And so when you say uh, the name of the company is Mud Hub, I, I, is it, I, I, was in, I was envisioning like an Adobe type structure or something. Why the name? Um, well, yeah, that's close. So Mudhub uh, came about because, uh, well, Adobe did come to mind. This is the land of mud and this is the hub. Um, you know, we build, uh, we build Adobe homes or, or fake Adobe homes here. And so it felt like something that would connect to the area and, and originating in New Mexico. And I, I felt that the tie was strong because it was, uh, the greenhouses were designed to address the factors that are local. And our feeling was that um, it would give it some identity. And that's why we chose Mudhub. And you know, my, my, my next door neighbor, she, she has some kind of a greenhouse in her backyard. It's kind of, I could see it when I walk my dog, you know, cause it's from a distance. It's like a, it's like a dome structure she has in her backyard. Can you speak to that? What type of a greenhouse would that be? It would be a, a dome greenhouse, uh, you know, exactly that. And so, uh, and so that you can buy some kind of a, is it probably like plexiglass or is it, what, probably, or is it, is it plastic? I don't know what it is from a distance. It could be, it could be plexiglass. It could be polycarbonate with panels because uh, the domes are, you know, they're, they're very geometric. And so they cut the panels uh, to, to fit the mullions in those, in those domes. Um, I've seen those around also. Um, they're different than ours, of course. Uh, um, you know, you, you get the shell and what you do inside is, is really up to you. And uh, so tell me, how does, how does your structure work? Do you, is it, um, is it, what type of protection does it have or what exactly does it have? Yeah, okay, so it's got multiple protections. Um, but first, uh, the most unique factor and ours is that um, we have, we incorporate raised beds and the structure above is supported by the raised beds. So there's no concrete involved. There's no uh, permitting involved. It's really up to, uh, if you're in a neighborhood, of course, you'd have to uh, check with your HOA to see if they're permissible, but um, they're, non-permanent structures yet very durable. They're made of solid wood and steel, steel tubing. Um, they're um, protected on the bottom with hardware cloth so moles and gophers can't go up on it. They're sealed on the outside, lined on the inside. The raised beds are made of either Douglas fir or, uh, or ponderosa pine, uh, which is available locally. Um, and um, we also incorporate uh, something that nobody else has, which is a, a vinyl coated uh, 
hexagonal steel, uh, steel mesh on the outside. And that's the base cover. So that, um, um, say in the summertime, uh, the rain can come in and predators can come in that attack the uh, typical uh, plant pests that attack um, squash bugs and things like that. So um, we have a very unique system. Also, uh, we include uh, shade cloth, which blocks out uh, the intense sunlight. And then over that, if uh, people opt for a four season uh, greenhouse, we have a polyfilm, uh, polyethylene film cover that rolls up on two sides all the way to the top. And uh, we also incorporated wind bracing um, on the end rafters with clamps and also uh, rubber ties on each corner at three settings. So uh, they're pretty solid. Um, and um, we've been told by people that, uh, that are interested that there's nothing like it out there in the market. And let's just let's let's just, let's speak to the intense sunlight because that's one of the selling points of New Mexico is that we have probably 330 days of sunshine a year. Let's talk a little bit about how that that's not good for what you do or just in general if you're trying to grow things. Well, you know, plants have um, plants have different pre preferences, just like us people. You know, like tomato plants, they could take they could take a good degree of sunlight, but um, you're um, really rolling the dice if you expose plants to intense sunlight all day long. And in the summer, you know, you get, um, you get 14, 15 hours of it at least. So um, that's a lot and it's too much for the plants to take in. Um, lettuces won't survive that way. Um, you have some, uh, Peas won't survive that way. Beans won't. Uh, you know, these are these are very um, picky plants. So you'll find that in the uh, in these greenhouses that uh, there are also microclimates. Um, some plants will do well on one side, and uh, others will do uh, well on the other side. So um, you have to be very conscious of where you plant. So yeah, uh, shade cloth is needed. And, and also it provides some cooling in the summertime too, because the wind will tend to go through the unit and, um, and cool things off a bit, which is really, really essential. And what uh, about, in, if, if, it, if, you, if they, somebody gets your four season model, what about the, the extreme cold in the winter? How just, <clears throat> if you put these flaps down, it's, what is the temperature inside? That's a great question. Um, so I happen to have a, a soil thermometer that I can read from inside our house. And um, the temperature does get quite cold uh, at night, particularly right before, uh, right before dawn. Um, it's gotten as cold as uh, 19 degrees inside. Um, believe it or not, well, let me back up. Um, during the day when the sun is out, it could reach low 80s. So um, yeah. Excuse me, you have that. Um, if your expectations aren't too big, and if you want to operate without a heater inside the greenhouse, you'll do well with spinaches. Um, kale will survive. You'll have some pak choy. You'll have your garlics, your, um, most of your root vegetables. Uh, I've seen, I picked carrots um, in February, so they'll overwinter really well. Um, and the seeds that you plant um, in the late fall uh, to come up early spring, you know, they're, they won't go away. They'll, they'll kind of stagnate. You'll have plants that come up. And uh, what the cold does is it just, it just halts their growth. But after spring, when, um, when the temperature rises uh, two, three degrees on average, uh, you'll see a big difference in the garden. And do you work as a consultant in the sense that you'll, with somebody's like all brand new to this, they want the, they love the concept, but they really don't know what the heck they're doing. Kind of like when you started and you grow, you grow corn. I mean, are there certain things you say to them, like don't grow corn or are there certain things like you just mentioned, try with the, you know, the, you know, try with the root vegetables in the colder weather. And you, do you kind of act as a consultant? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm a certified master gardener. So yeah, that's part of my outreach. Uh, and people ask questions all the time. 
not just clients. Um, I have a website. Um, Mud Hub Greenhouses has a website, and we have an extensive resource deck. And from that, I borrow from personal experience and uh, write articles, and um, and also use New Mexico State um, University uh, website to attack certain areas like uh, integrated pest management, uh, companion planting, what plants go well with each other, um, alternating crops, um, lots of lots of good information that. Um, that I have in my head, and also, uh, and also on the website. That, and we'll, uh, we'll we'll definitely post all of that information along with the video. In terms of, I know that you're doing work uh, was different, or you have been approached by the some of the the uh, Native American or the Indian pueblos in northern New Mexico, and also the school. Some of the schools have reached out to you. Tell me a little bit about some of these bigger projects that you've worked on or are currently working on. Yeah. Uh, those are a lot of fun. I mean, the homeowner projects are fun too. I mean, on a personal level, you get to know these people and, um, and it's, um, it's different than say designing a, a house for them or anything like that. You know, it's just a lot, a lot more laid back, which I like. Um, the school projects are great uh, because uh, they're used as educational classrooms. We're doing one for Santa Fe High, probably in the next month. Um, it's gonna be a 12 by 20, and it's gonna be used, um, it's gonna be built by um, their engineering uh, department. And so I'll be there supervising how it goes together. And then once it's built, it's gonna be taken over by their horticulture uh, department. So um, they'll be growing and learning and uh, doing things that uh, learning how what how food comes about, you know where where food comes from, which is great. And um, then in, in terms, you know, I've heard um, uh, that our water it's we have like hard water here. Does does the type of water we have does that affect growing? Uh, you know the the you know when you have to water plants or just is any water fine? Any water is fine. It's really it's really in the soil. You know you really. Um, you really have to, um, what I advise people is to test the soil. Um, Colorado State University has a very inexpensive kit for $35. You can uh, send them a sample and they'll give you a full three page report on, um, on the, um, you know, the different levels of nitrogen, potassium uh, and so forth and uh, zinc and um, rec make recommendations based on that. So, so what type of soil do you use here in the Santa Fe area? Do you just go to a greenhouse and buy big bags of black gold or whatever those things are called? Um, there's a good there's a good resource um, that used to be the community farm. Um, they have um, they have great um, selections of soil there. Uh, Paynes locally they have their soil yard and Albuquerque uh, their soil solutions. Um, and um, the soil there is is nice because it's uh, it allows for aeration and and the uh, and the plant roots. You know it won't get too condensed, too compacted, and it's got the right amount of minerals. So really, uh, to have a successful garden, I mean, basically you need uh, you need the roots need oxygen, uh, you need water and soil, and that's it. And then what about fertilizer? Um, Fertilizer is not needed if you have a decent compost pile. Um, you have all the minerals that you need. Okay. Um, okay. Rainwater is fantastic if you have a collection um, um, basin or or a tank. Uh, that's very very good because it's got everything that that's needed there. Uh, better then, than water. And then from start to finish, for just like an average home, um, if somebody is watching this and they're thinking, you know, that's something that I really would like, um, from start to finish, um, how long does it take you to build one of these units? It takes two days. Just two days. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, you know, we're at the end of the interview, and I just wanted to find out, is there anything else you'd like to end with in terms of, of uh, 
of, of people that might be thinking, you know, they want to, you know, I, I think we've all learned something during this pandemic where people are trying to be more, uh, you know, they're not having to rely on having to go to the grocery store and different things. What would you like to say um, to these people who might be considering growing their own vegetables year round in northern New Mexico? I'd say if you're inclined to do it, go for it. You know, it's it doesn't take up all your time. Uh, I must spend um, during the winter months, I spend probably maybe three or four hours a week, you know, in my own greenhouse, you know, I'm uh, aerating the soil, I'm uh, checking on the plants, I'm uh, weeding, doing stuff like that, or just being out there. It's so great, just just sitting out in the greenhouse and, and having a few minutes of peace. Um, that's, uh, I mean, that's, it's a lifestyle and it's also, um, it's a hobby with a benefit, you know, is what I what I like to say. I mean, everybody's going to have a hobby and, and you're going to make a monetary investment most of the time with your hobbies. This one pays back. You get fresh organic food out of it and the satisfaction of eating it and, and that you provided it and, and, and are able to use um, uh, some of the ingredients in your favorite dishes to uh, make it happen. So um, I think there are a lot of levels of satisfaction in having your own greenhouse. And uh, when I had uh, first built ours, um, I just couldn't believe it. You know, I, I couldn't believe we had our own greenhouse. I mean, this is something that you only saw in nurseries um, or, or farms in the middle of nowhere. And um, and to have your own personal greenhouse to me was uh, was something really cool. So I think that most people that uh, opt in for this uh, feel the same way. And, it's it's uh, personal satisfaction. Well, yeah. yeah, and it's really funny. Every time I post a uh, pictures of some of the crops uh, of my own on social media, in, inevitably, uh, I'll get one or two pictures from clients um, sent to me that are even better. They're twice as good. So, uh, a little competitive competition going on. That sounds good, right? Exactly, but, exactly. Well, Rod Gestin from Mud Grub Greenhouses. Hub. Thank you. Hub. Mud Hub. I'm, I keep saying grub. I'm thinking food. <laughs> mud hub not mud grub but there's you get grub from the mud hub greenhouses yes. i want to thank you this uh and like i said all of your your website and all of the pertinent details will be posted with this video and i'm hoping that people uh want to ring you up and start start their own greenhouse thanks again hey thanks anna appreciate it thank you